he comes home drunk, uh, chases me from the sitting room. Then he comes back pulling my mom and slapping her. He really beat her bad that day, very bad. I still remember seeing her and I was like, this is, this is not my mom, the mom that I know, because her hair was shaved, she didn't have all her front teeth. Uh, she couldn't speak. He gave me a, like a sense of belonging and I felt loved. And I really needed that because I didn't, I stopped feeling loved once my mom died when I was seven years. So now I'm feeling loved. I'm feeling accepted. Someone cares. Someone cares. And they're telling you how beautiful you are. Yes. She will beat me. And I, you know, I, I got used to it because it's something that from my childhood. You I've, grew up watching. Yes, I grew up watching my mom being beaten so up. So normal. this is normal. Me, I met an amazing man. Amazing. This man was amazing in all aspects. And he was nice. And I loved him and I felt loved in all ways. I felt accepted. I felt uh, valid. And he tells me, Bucek, Bucek, I don't a screenshot. I don't even wait for that screenshot. I put on my data. I didn't scroll twice. I see Enoch's picture and Pale Jewits. We have lost another one. Rest in peace. I just froze, completely froze. I went numb. I was accused of uh, being involved in his death. That uh, I just, now my history now came Popped out. Up. Yes, that everything I touch dies. Everything that I have must die. So I was told that Mimi ni nooks. Mimi ni bad luck. Right now the world uh, paints out the pic a picture that when you're a single mom, especially a single mom of two, you deserve nothing. And then we, we are all painted that uh, we walked out of marriages, we are just bad women, and it's not true. A ah, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Gugin. Nothing makes me happy than seeing people breaking generational curses. There are things that happened to our parents that people think it's okay that these things should actually happen to us as well. But when we find our voice and then we say, unfortunately, that happened that time, but it's not going to happen to me. And this stops with me. Honestly, that makes me really happy. My guest today, not only is she doing an incredible work, making sure majority of us are safe in this country, but she is also owning her story. She refuses to be broken regardless of the many things that happened to her. And when I asked her, what do you want to accomplish with the story? She said, I know a lot of people will not get it, but this is my story and I have to own my story. I'm about to let her introduce herself so that she can be able to inspire us, but before I do that, I want to say thank you so much to our partners at Optiven for always coming through. They just marked 24 years of positive transformation last year. And guys, when I see people partnering with us, I don't take it for granted. It's always good when you find people walking a journey with you. And if you are looking into owning a retirement home, why don't you check out their property in Vipingo Ocean View Ridge? Come on, Ataka could retire Kiangalia Indian Ocean well and good. Mungu ametupatia hizi pesa to enjoy but there is no pressure. Call them on the number yenye iko hapa kwa screen and ask them Optiven what do you have for me guys and also to say thank you so much to you guys. I believe by the time we are filming this we are approaching 830,000 subscribers. Guys thank you so much. I don't take your support for granted and if you've not subscribed please remember it's free. Uh, subscribe so that our work can continue reaching a lot of people and also for the team that puts this work together. I appreciate you and also myself for hosting this show. Hi Kwangi Rahisi, you know. And now without further ado, please allow me to let my guest today introduce herself. Good morning. Good morning. Looking lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Umesema, today we are living here with body goals, <laughs> uh, meal plan. <laughs> yes. The smile, how are you feeling? 
Ah, uh, I thank God. You look amazing. Thank you so much. Yes, and thank you for honoring us with your story. Yes. I don't take that part for granted. But before we go any further, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Charlotte Kavata. I'm a single mother of two. Uh, I'm a civil servant under the NPS. I don't have much around me. Yes. <laughs> Just that. Mm. Uh, I love being a mother mm -hmm. and I love my job. Yes. yes. What do you love about your job? Um, interacting with people. Mm -hmm. You get to meet so many people uh, in every occasion. Yes. And I love serving people. Is it, do, you, do, we, do we guys annoy you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but we were trained to <laughs> to, to, to handle, handle us. Yes. yes. Uh, yes. So Sengine, we act like we know everything. Yes. So how do you handle us, Wajuaji? Um, ntacha tu wende ju. Hey. Utarudi tu chini. Yeah. Then we come to a common page. Okay. Yes. Is it something you always loved to do? Uh, honestly, not really. Uh, life happened and it was the only opportunity I got. But I took it in and accepted it and I do my best. Okay. Yes. But now you, you love it? I love it. All right. Yes. So the, the theme of our show is dubbed rebuilding. Some yes. people even said, Lynn, let's make this year also the year of restoration. Yes. What are you rebuilding in your life or what are you restoring in your life right now? Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm trying to find myself. Because in the midst of everything that I went through, I kind of lost myself. Uh, I'm trying to rebuild myself and I want to be happy. Mm -hmm. I wish that for you. <laughs> I wish that for you. Thank you. I, I just feel like everyone deserves to be happy. Yes. I just feel like we were created, not we carry so many burdens. A lot. And sometimes I ask, would this, only would this was the reason we were created? to carry this much burden and not experience a moment of happiness. Because happiness is beautiful. So beautiful. Joy is beautiful, it's you know? Beautiful. Yes, but Acha Mini Nyamaze, from an area you are comfortable, even before that, yes. why was it important for you to want to share your story? Um, in my line of duty, I meet people just, just strolling and someone just wants some someone to listen to mm -hmm. and people need advice out here people i uh, don't understand what they are going through uh, and i've been through a lot myself mm -hmm. and i want to encourage someone out there mm -hmm. that yeah you can have a bad story and still live life be happy uh heal uh it doesn't heal immediately it's not a switch that you just flip on and off it's a progress and you just have to commit yourself to your healing progress. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have to I love that. Yes. You have to commit yourself to yes. your healing. Yes. That's actually commitment. Yes. So you have to be very intentional yes. with your healing journey. Yes. I love that. But now from an area you are comfortable in, walk us through your story. Okay. So that whoever is watching, I know I have the brief, I know where this starts and where this ends, but yes. whoever is watching might be able to look at you and say, I mean, if she was able able to conquer this yes. i am able to conquer and also break all these curses you know yes yeah. uh i was the only child uh to my dad and my mom i was my dad's favorite girl that princess so i got everything i wanted my dad was also a police officer yeah so life was okay but my dad used to beat my mom a lot a lot I kind of got used to it. So this unfortunate day, uh, he comes home drunk, uh, chases me from the sitting room, uh, goes to his bedroom, waits for my mom to come, but I just hear him running. Uh, then he comes back pulling my mom and slapping her. He really beat her bad that day, very bad. Cause he was even hitting her with a stool on the head. Uh, banging her on the ground, kicking her stomach, and I, I can't remember the words he was altering because 
that commotion really frightened someone eh? and i was a child i was only seven years old yeah. so i was just afraid hiding behind the curtain and uh, he calls me i go uh, he lifts me up throws me down on my mom so i crawl back under the curtain and he goes to his bedroom so my mom is still laying there unconscious uh, after a few hours he comes back uh, takes some water pours on her she doesn't wake up so he carries her to the bedroom so the following day i had to go to school uh, i went to school i came back home my mom was still there i went to play i didn't take it seriously it's something that used to happen they used to fight and life will just go back to normal so a few days later uh, i'm called by my friends while we're pray- playing sorry mm-hmm. and um they tell me gary a police we used to stay in the police line so it wasn't a big deal so i go uh, my mom is carried and uh, taken taken away so i stay with my dad for a couple of days then he disappears so i'm left alone i'm a seven year old at that moment um a few days me just eating from the neighbors houses my aunt comes and picks me up mm. and i go and stay with her for a couple of days so i kept asking ah, where's my mom where's my mom where's my dad uh when i mention my dad it becomes a very sensitive topic but when i ask about my mom i'm told that i'll take you to go see her so one day my aunt takes me to see my mom i still remember seeing her and i was like this is this is not my mom the mom that i know because her hair was shaved she didn't have all her front teeth uh, she couldn't speak she was just removing a funny sound when she saw me she, she kept crying but she couldn't talk and i asked what what happened why is my mom like this and no, nobody was telling me anything so we go back home i'm a child life is going on i i just know she'll be okay and we'll go back to normal uh but she ends up dying apparently she had severe brain damage and her kidneys had failed she didn't have her teeth they couldn't operate on her cuz there was so much blood in the skull that if they had tampered she could have just died mm. on the operation mm. bed so i remember walking to the living room and i was told that my mom was dead i at that age i couldn't really dig in what death meant so uh at that moment my dad is still at large uh no one was telling me a lot so i mean i'm just going on with life and there was a lot of pulling from my dad's side and my mom's side because uh, my mom had already been paid for the bride price so she had to be buried at her husband's home that is tradition but uh my relatives from my mom's side were fighting that but the husband killed her she cannot be buried where she was killed she has to be buried at her mother's place but at that moment tradition won and my mom was buried at my dad's place uh, i remember i attended the funeral but there was a lot of confusion i wasn't understanding what was really happening everything was happening too fast then when we got back home after one term um i was taken to boarding i was in class 3 at the moment so dad is still in my age uh no one was telling me so i mm. came to not to the funeral he yes. didn't even show up no he didn't come mm. so later on is when i was told that he was arrested and i have to go to court and testify ah uh, everyone was chased out i was left with the judge with the lawyers and the clerks i remember i saw i could clearly remember seeing my dad mm. on the other side i wanted to go to him but uh my aunt said no uh, so i was told to narrate what happened that is what i did i narrated playing with my handkerchief 
I narrated the whole story, what happened from the beginning to the end. And that is how my dad was imprisoned. Uh, no one told me exactly. I, I came to learn so many things when I got the newspapers. Because no one was telling me the exact story. So apparently he, uh, he was uh, charged with manslaughter because it wasn't intentional. He was drunk. Uh, which at that point, it didn't make sense. But it's the law. So in boarding life was tough. I'm a class three from being the little princess to being thrown somewhere where nobody cares. So life got very dark for me, very dark. I could just feel the immense pain of no one cares about me. I didn't want to go home. I just wanted to stay in school. And AIC Girls has a rescue mission for, circumcision, for mm. sorry, circumcised girls. Mm -hmm. So I would stay with them. I really had fun staying with them instead of going home because home was just beating, chaos, chores, uh, insults. I didn't want to go home. And she would really attack the most sensitive parts of me. My body, my my skin tone, because she was way light. Way very who, she who was this? light. My aunt. Oh, good. She the one was, now who took you. Yes. Mm. She was way light. So she would insult me, uh, and tell me, uh, why did you choose a dark dad? Uh you're going to end up a murderer like your dad. You're going you're stupid as your mom, you're going to die like your mom. And I I kept believing these things. Because so this is auntie from mom's side. Yes. Oh. Sister to my mom. Yes. And I kept believing that is who I am. I am a murderer. I uh, I have a dark skinned dad. Uh, I'm stupid like my mom. And it I couldn't even perform well in school because I'm stupid like my mother. So why should I even work hard? And it went on for years, for years, for years. And finally, when I got to form four, she threw me out. She accused me of sleeping with her husband, which it came from nowhere. But she just wanted to do away with me. And I had to struggle out here. Uh, I first stayed with an old um, high school classmate. Then one of my aunties called me and told me, like, come, we stay. Come, come. Then when I went there, because I wasn't doing what she wanted, uh, because she wanted me to be staying at her every evening, I dress up, I go and sit at her local club, and I couldn't do that because I wasn't used to that nightlife. So I went looking for a job at uh, EPZ, mm. and I got a job. And that is how I was told, uh, you have to live. So I started life there. So I was just trying to juggle around. Uh, I wasn't understanding. I, I felt that I'd never belonged anywhere because I this auntie does this, this auntie does that. Uh, my father's side uh, completely disappeared at that time. Uh, I didn't know anyone from my dad's side. And I felt alone. So I met my first baby daddy. We stayed together for a while and I thought he was a good guy, but he would beat me. And I, you know, I, I got used to it because it's something that from my childhood. You I've, grew up watching? Yes, I grew up watching my mom being beaten so up. So normal. this is normal. Uh, for a guy to just beat you, it's normal. Kawaida. Kawaida. And I was so naive. I was so naive. This guy had my M-Pesa pins, uh, my account pins. He had every little detail about me. I was that naive. But Sinampenda. <laughs> and how old are you here? I was around 21. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, so you are working? I'm working. Una hustle? Una hustle. Una unampenda? Una unampenda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave me a, like a sense of belonging and I felt loved. 
and I really needed that because I didn't, I stopped feeling loved once my mom died when I was seven years. So now I'm feeling loved. I'm feeling accepted. Someone cares. Someone cares. And they're telling you how beautiful you are. Yes. And that is something because I grew up having a lot of insecurities because I was told that my, my, my figure is not right. My skin tone is not right. Uh, my mind is not right. Uh, I come from a very bad background. So when someone comes and gives me these little things, you know, I really grasp on them. Yes. Uh, I got pregnant and I was just out. <laughs> uh, I remember I was just confused i just had to call one of my cousins and i told him hey i've been chased out and it's like this and like this and he tells me uh i'm going to send you some money uh go to my mom's place in the village the same auntie that raised me so i go i don't inform her that i'm pregnant so i'm just there vomiting <laughs> and she's like come on pato kimi nyambie to shaft down and I'm just there quiet because how do I tell her that I'm pregnant from the worst community on this planet? What people think. And days later, she, she's informed and where well, I couldn't have the end of it. Like, I Kenya, yote, uliona tu mwenyoneza bebea mimbani, that tribe. <laughs> Someone without a payslip. And I was like, I'm helpless, so I can't speak, I can't. I'm already pregnant, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, this is my first experience with this. And I just had to just... <laughs> Which is something she, she, she was very good at. I was, she had made me so broken that I didn't even believe in myself. I was just, there's nothing good about me. Nothing good about me. I am everything I am told. I cannot identify myself. I am just what I'm told I am. And uh, I remember this day, the, the, the wife to my, one of my cousins comes and she, she, she had brought me all this nice baby clothes and i was so excited i was there checking so excited uh, because i had nothing i had n completely nothing i have no income you, I, you quit i had to quit i had to go to the village i yes. was thrown out so i had to go to the village so i have no income i had the baby daddy uh, we are not communicating that much but there's a time he told me to come back come back we sort this out so that I had that in mind, but when I, I was still trying to understand if I should go, if I should stay, but this environment is toxic. The other environment is still toxic. So which one is less toxic yes. than the other? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when she brings those clothes, I'm excited because I was in her house. Um, I time flies and it gets dark, and I go back to the to my auntie's house, and she's like, "Mepanga mm -hmm. kuni and I just keep quiet because nilikuwa na nyenye to everything she says. So sikuwa na mjibu. I'll just keep quiet. Just take it in. So I go to the kitchen try to prepare. I mean, usini pike? Mepanga kuniyekea sumu. And I go to the lady and I tell her, hey, mother, anasema, hivi na hivi na hivi. She asks me, um, and I tell her, yeah, we've been talking. And she tells me, Alisema Urudi, yes, Twende. <laughs> just go there, <laughs> just go back there. It's way less toxic. <laughs> so I go and stay there. Uh, the baby comes. Actually, Nilizalia kwa mpunga. Cause we could, I, I remember the, the hospitals were free, yes, but every single person that I knew at that time that went to deliver in the hospital, they were done CS. So I didn't want to go through mm -hmm. CS. 
And they, they could just come up with a little excuse that, oh, you can't push, yes, because they were training uh, some doctors. So I didn't want to go to the hospital. So uh, this guy, organ the sister to this guy organizes uh, Amkunga, and I go, and I deliver my baby, oh. a boy, very fine boy. Oh. <laughs> and... Uh, we couldn't even afford to pay the, the mkunga. Apparently the guy drank all the money he had. So I had to call one of my cousins and lie that Niko Hosi nime deliver a sinad pesa ya kulipa. So I'm sent for some money. We pay the mkunga. We go back home. And the, the, the extra money I buy to be sheni. You know, those two small, small things. Life was tough. Life was tough. Uh, and he, a year down the line, the guy decides that he gets a better job. So may I go back to working to me PZ and he gets a better job, a better pay. And suddenly, me see what class here, okay? And I was told a lot, uh, sina kwetu, uh, sina masomo, um, sina background. Uh, any, I was told a lot by him and his brother. And... I, I just start raising my kid alone uh, with no support from him. It was tough. Tulikula indomi. Tulikula indomi. Because that indomi is way easier to cook. Uh, it's yeah. way easy you to cook. You just put some hot water. It's just hot water. Up. Yes. I'll do that. I'll just... Um, nakatia katia tunyanya. In a boil pamoza, I give my kid. Because what do I do? What do I do? At some point, I couldn't even afford uh, diapers. So I used, I cut some of his shawls. I would wrap him in that till I get the next mm -hmm. income. Mm -hmm. And it was tough. It was tough. I had to leave him in daycare, uh, go to work. And it was a long walk. It was a very long walk. Uh, I got promoted at work. Wow. And... I moved to a better place. Good. I took my kid to a better daycare. I started managing myself. Remember this guy had taken a loan with my equity line without informing me. He just, he had all the pins, everything. So I was paying loan and trying to live with my kid. But I thank God um, things were getting better. Uh, for me to get employed, I tried the recruitment for three times. So the fourth one, I got lucky. I got the job. So I had to prepare myself to report to Keganjo. The good thing is we had a whole month to prepare. So I just called the baby daddy and told him, you have to come and take uh, this house things. Because uh, I can't, I, I don't know where I'm going to take them at the moment. Uh, my kid is going to stay with, with one of my cousins uh, till I finish training. And you know, before I went, I told him I'm going for recruitment. And he told me, Awezi Pata. Awezi Pata, you cannot succeed. <laughs> him and his brother, they said, I cannot succeed. Like, Aziz Hassan. Come on. You're nothing. So when I come back and I tell him that Nimepata, he's like, oh, okay, you had money. I, I didn't use any money. I didn't use it. I, I don't even have any connections. And he's like, so I chukua vitu. So I report to Keganjo, do my training. It's not a joke. Uh, the training is not a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> it's not a joke. But it's good. Uh, after the whole training, I came out of that place a completely different person completely different mindset uh, i had really grown up and i knew what i want and what i need and the minute i got out ah uh, apparently sasa baby daddy wants me back i gonna pay sleep <laughs> and he gave me an <coughs> ultimatum like for him to be in this kid's life we have to get back together and i was like mm mm no, I'm not going down that path because uh, you're so used to manipulating me and you're so used to 
accessing my finances without my consultation so that is what you expect right now that is why you want me in your life and i was like no and then you use the kid yes so he had come uh to where i was to stay with me and so this day when he tells me like uh i want to be my kid's life but uh but we have to get back together we have to live together uh I tell him no and he says like I need space I need time and I tell him you go have your space you go have your time and I don't think we've spoken from then wow there's a time I tried to reach uh, to reach out and I told him like um I've transferred the kid to a new school can I send you the uh, school pay bill you just pay some amount I've paid almost all just pay the remaining amount and i can ijibu i'll see what i can do so to date he's still seeing what he can oh, do oh until how many years later <coughs> is it four he's still seeing what he can do yes okay he's still seeing what he can do mm. so i just accepted the fact that this is just it it's me and my kid uh so life gets way brighter for me i meet an amazing man amazing this man was amazing in all aspects he had his faults yes but he was just amazing nice loving caring and he understood my pain i got so good in hiding my pain that the world could not see it until you sit down with me have a talk with me and i get comfortable enough to tell you my pain so he paid for my counseling He's the first person in my life to actually see that I need professional help to deal with my childhood traumas. And he was nice and I loved him and I felt loved in all ways I felt accepted, I felt uh valued. Uh he he just made it uh his job to make sure that he validates me he shows me that i'm loved that i'm cared for A that i'm important side of yes you. and he brought something good in me and you know he would get very mad because you know from my childhood i'll just roll over for people to walk all over me i oh. couldn't talk i couldn't say anything you you just decide to do what you want i just keep quiet and stay in a corner you would roll over Yes. and let people walk yes. over you and he really got mad about that he would really no you're not supposed to do that wambie no even relatives sema nime kama wewe wezi wambia umesema no wambia eno kama sema no he would step up for me he would defend me and i loved him i i saw life from a different angle and it was nice it was so nice i felt happy i felt so much joy uh, we used yes we used to fight and he used to try and calm me down uh, try to bring logic oh. without uh, making me feel stupid okay good good <laughs> good good mm-hmm. without making me feel stupid he would try and make me see uh, a logic side of everything he knew i was very emotional and i would just if i got mad i'll just lock myself away i won't interact with people i won't talk to anyone I just want to be alone he loved my kid they were so close even when he would, he was at work because he used to work at lamu forest mm. um he would just call me and pati miles to onge and my sister go to the bedroom and have their own conversation uh-huh. without me knowing what they've talked about ah it was nice it was nice ah uh, he took me to his parents and he was a funny person he was a very funny person cuz he when we got there mm. uh, the mom was there and the aunt he left me there and told me explain yourself <laughs> love him <laughs> and he went jipange jipange ukiamua kuchoma nishoma <laughs> <laughs> if 
vile utaona oh. and he will live laughing he was a very funny character i stayed there for a couple of days they were nice they were very good people as i thought and it was nice uh, i felt like now i have a be- somewhere i can belong oh. i'm loved uh people love me here people understand me here people don't judge me here uh people just don't see me as damaged here the only person that knew that i was actually damaged was enoch and he wasn't telling uh because he was working on me to get better wow. and i was also working on myself to be a better person and it was just an amazing experience so uh he plans with his family to go uh see my side of the family and we go for an introduction actually i remember tulienda isilina yeye kufanya shopping and he picked the dress that he wanted me to wear and paid for it wow. he was nice he made sure every little detail he's the one that has taken care of everything and it was an amazing experience uh, we went home uh, they discussed uh, the the five goats ni kama mkamba we start we deal fast with goats tano how many goats do you do my people in your so when you need tano aizo ni za kwanza oh. eh, na yenye moja itachinjwa on that day wow, zibaki eh, ine so you got to show up with five goats uh, yes day. on the introduction not not on the introduction uh. day on before bringing all the bright prize yes. you have to come with five goats so atam kikosa na mbuzi zinabaki kwetu wana via kau right now <laughs> so ara tukiamua wazazi wangu walibaki na tumbuzi eh, eh, oh, eh, kuna watu watu na tulipikiwa <laughs> tulipika moja eh. anyways na ni wao watakuja wachinje na wapike ah, so they also doing all the work yes so my people don't get tired <laughs> watausha via mbafta everything yes. is on them <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Yes, it's kamba. Yeah. No, it's nice though. It's nice. Mm. So, yeah, and after the function, it was during the covid uh, thing that there was a lot of lockdown. Uh, no going out of Nairobi, no coming to Nairobi. So when we got back, I <coughs> felt like something is off. Uh, but I'm interested in one part. Huh? Uh-huh. I hold on but before something is off the people who are now going you are home who yes. are you going to uh, where i was raised your aunt yes because that is the place i knew as home so and they were okay with receiving the goats uh, my aunt had pa- passed mm. away okay sorry uh, so it was only the husband mm. and some of uh, his uh, okay family members so there was no drama there was no drama why would they be drama but why do I benefit why do you go there you go <laughs> why would they why? be drama i mean i mean like you could you told me i'm nothing but when the gods come let's eat i become something let's eat <laughs> okay <laughs> so we get back to nairobi and i feel something is off so i decide to you know he kept telling me ebu pata ball wewe ebu pata ball <laughs> and I'll tell him apana so we just finish this whole thing kwanza then uh, we start and he'll tell me nimekwambia yes so I go test and it's positive uh, um, you're pregnant expectant. yes he got so happy mm. i never knew people could get that men could get that excited about pregnancy yes <laughs> <laughs> he was so excited he was so happy i was bought for so many gifts wow he was so happy he would he would literally wake up in the morning before i go to work because uh my pregnancies are quite hectic mm. so i vomit a lot d- during the day yeah. so he would cook porridge for me he was that nice he would cook porridge for me make sure i have some ginger lemon water oh. uh, 
when he goes for for work when he's yes. away he will keep calling texting how are you doing he was a very good communicator how are you feeling uh, when is the next clinic uh, i come we go to the next clinic he was so nice i was feeling loved i was feeling pampered so uh we had planned uh, for the date kupeleka zile mbuzi tano so when you know apparently azizi pelekwa when i'm expectant so we had when he came back home we had to go to his parents and tell them that we have to postpone because i'm expectant mm. and they were so happy i remember the mom could ask me unasikia kukula nini because everything i would eat i would vomit unasikia kukula nini kutengeneze msana wangu and i was feeling wow Amen. god has finally seen me so when we come back to Nairobi he doesn't stay because he, ha- he had to report to, on duty so he goes to Mombasa yeah. direct so we just communicated communicated so a few weeks down the line uh, i come from work and i'm just laying on bed and i'm called by one of my details and she tells me um have you checked whatsapp and i'm like no i've been busy and i'm so tired i've not uh, gone online uh, can you go check uh, the detail uh, whatsapp group and i immediately go and check and there is enox picture and someone asking nani anajua huyu so I, i immediately copy the number and call and the lady on the other side asks me uh ako wapi he he went to work and if you do, she tells me it was so rude Come on, jump in yako then see bwana yako. Like, I'm not, am I supposed to keep tabs on someone when he's at work? And I, I didn't have the energy for that at that moment. So I called the brother. Uh, what is happening? Uh, he tells me, uh, the he, he all, 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 all he knows is that uh, Enoch's group uh, troop hasn't been found they, they are not known where they are their whereabouts are not known and i'm like okay uh, let me try call a few people see if i can trace him because he had communicated uh, two days before that wanaingia kichaka uh, for patrol uh, he will get back to me when he comes out of the forest mm-hmm. it was something that used to happen so i was mm-hmm. so used to it mm-hmm. so i didn't think it was going to be any different so um i call everyone everyone that i knew that was with him working in the same area the, their phones were not going through uh, so i call another person that is another is in another different place and he tells me are you relax are the only troop that uh, encountered al shabab is kdf uh uh sf asif and i asked him are you sure are you sure please check uh please counter check and he tells me relax everything is well so i couldn't sleep the whole night because how do you even sleep and in the morning i call the brother again any news uh that is around 4:30 in the morning any news he tells me no uh, i'll let you know if uh, anything comes up i just feel like uh, i can't stay in this bed i have to go to work i uh, try and distract myself so i wake up i uh, dress my prepare myself for work go to work so we are dropped where we are supposed to patrol and so a new number calls me and most of my friends call me calves mm. And Kavzum on Facebook. You have to make a Facebook new query. And I'm like, Miss Jingia Facebook, it's 5 in the morning. Why would you be Facebooking 5 in the morning? And he tells me, "Bu check, bu check. Acha nikutumie screenshot." I don't even wait for that screenshot. I put on my data. I didn't scroll twice. I see Enox picture and Pale Juits. We have lost another one. Resting. I just froze mm. completely froze I went now Discover a homely haven at Ocean View Ridge in Vipingo by Optiven Visualize your dream coastal home 
Call us today on 0790-300-300. My colleague asked me, what's up? I showed him and he was like, he called the station and uh, Gary, you took me, I, I be taken back to the station. So I go in the house, I'm just seated there in my uniform. I'm just looking at it, I'm not, it's not sinking in. I'm just looking at these pictures. Not, so people start coming to my place, my colleagues, all the ladies. Uh, actually, I don't want to back a uniform because I was frozen. Mm. And I'm calling and calling. I called my cousin and I told him, uh, when I post Enoch, Facebook, I'm a pass. And I hung up. And no one is giving me the exact information. No one is telling me anything. I called the brother. He tell, he keeps telling me, Atena nazo vitu watu wana post. Atena nazo, we've not gotten confirmation. We've not got, gotten any confirmation. And I'm like, you're sure? I, try, I was calling everyone I knew to try and give me clarity what is happening. No one was telling me. So my cousin's wife comes and I just completely break down. Because I knew I could see she knows something she was not telling me. So during the day one of Enoch's cousin comes and she confirms that Enoch is no more. And I just broke down. Completely broke down. I, the pain was just, I could literally feel my heart was crashing. I, my brain wasn't understanding what is really happening. How? But we talked just two days ago. And it's not supposed to go this way. This is not supposed, this is not how it's supposed to end. Uh, the following day, the brother comes and he's like, uh, uh, our people say you go to the village. And my cousin's wife uh, refuses. She, 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 says, she says that, no, we, we, can, we know how to deal with her when she's here, not there. I didn't know it was a strategy to carry things from the house. Because a few days later, the brother comes in with some friends and says that Wamekujia vitu. At first, alisema nguo, which I had asked some of the aunties. Kuna mila, I'm supposed to know, prepare myself mentally before uh, it, I'm attacked with it. And the aunties were like, no, akuna, everything is just the normal way. And this this day the brother comes. I don't know. My my house used to be fully packed with people. People are cooking. People are doing this here. People are just there talking. So apparently that day we were just me and my cousin's wife. And when they came, some of my colleagues came and Majil kuime potea so to go to a Maji station to do ikuje wapikiwe and wakase mano they don't want food. Because they knew what they had come to do. So the brother says, uh, we want his clothes. I'm like, but you told me uh, I can give them when I'm comfortable. Because it's just, this thing just happened. So how do I wake up in the morning? And his side of the wardrobe is completely empty. And they were like, no, uh, it's tradition. Um, it's what it's supposed to happen. We're supposed to juku gawana zake before he's buried. My mind couldn't wrap it around. And I was like, okay, you just want his clothes. To <coughs> kind of bedroom <coughs> and my cousin's wife. And we were packing. The brother tried to come in with the, one of the friends. My cousin's wife told him, no. Kaini sitting, go to our party. So we packed, we packed, we packed. And... When we gave them, uh, the brother said in a laptop, we were happy. The laptop we were sharing with Enoch. So a friend of mine had borrowed. She had exams. And I told them, uh, for the moment, I but I, because the following day we were to travel, 
to check the body to Kakamega eh, nitakuja nayo once na kitoka job jioni ataniletea nitakuja nayo i touched her nerve there i was actually not the one talking but if your brother alikuwa anawaambia cuz the brother became very rude and very aggressive and he was like no to talk about bila your laptop it's just a laptop and it's not like we owned property we were yet to own property it's it's when we were starting life so we don't have anything that is major and he's like no tunataka hiyo laptop hata hizi vitu zote kwa nyumba ni za Enoch tunaenda kuja na lori tubebe zote and you're pregnant i'm pregnant and he knows he started saying hata hiyo mimba si ya Enoch kuna venyeneza kuwa ya Enoch anashindanga kichaka Funny pro- pregnancy is something that you have to do a whole procedure. Sikujua tunaiendea surgery. Mimi sikujua hata mimi tunafaa eh, tuna apply kwanza we, we, we seek consultation first. I think eh, also. Yes. Where is an attachment. I don't know. Yes. Ah, and she started saying that hata ajui na lia nini nimemjua nimejua tu ndugu yao juzi. Ah, yeye ndo me lose he has known him for years. I wasn't talking. I, w- I just let him vent. He was venting outside. So the whole place. The whole place Wanaskia. everyone is just there wondering. So when the commotion got heated up, uh, some of my colleagues went to the station to call the OCS cuz things were getting out of hand. Cuz my cousin's wife was like, if it's just a laptop, I just send you money you go buy another one. Hapana, hapana tunataka hiyo laptop. Hata tumitisha lori tunabeba kila kitu kwa nyumba. Hiki kila kitu kwa nyumba ni enok and you know me and my me knowing her she's a very defensive person and she doesn't tolerate uh anything from anyone but this day she was quiet she couldn't wrap her mind around what was happening so we were just seated there mimi na yeye wondering what is all this so how can these people just change overnight like just by a snap they became completely different people and the friends were the ones talking way more vulgar than their brother i became number one enemy that uh i'm prideful person nimewafukuza apparently that is what they went and told everyone that nimewafukuza nimewatukana and nimewanyima vitu za enoch that is what they went and told them. before they left my cousin was called so he came back but found that 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 they've already left mm-hmm. after causing a whole lot of mayhem mm-hmm. and the the one thing that made them leave is when the OCS was coming because they knew this thing now it's going to be a police mm-hmm. issue mm-hmm. so they left when my cousin called the brother the brother was like oh we are mstana ni mbaya ametutukana eh ametufukuza eh na baba yetu amesema msikanyange huko do not come for them before he left he had called the dad akiwa amesimama kwa mlango na akaeka loudspeaker and the dad said wasikuje huko wasikanyange huko so the same thing my cousin has been told my cousin called the dad and akamwambia like tumeambiwa tusiende mazishi and the dad was like msiende if um baba amesema hivyo then don't go don't go you don't know what you're going to find mm. just stay how do you tell me this person has died i'm not going to bury i have no confirmation because the, no one could let me go to the mortuary to see to view his body because they had a notion um mila this mila thing uh, pregnant women don't go to the mortuary and which at some point i came and uh, so maybe it made a little sense because um even my side of the family were like no she she, she can't she can't see him mm. like that mm. because uh he he was shot three times one on the spinal cord uh two from the head behind so the face was all out he didn't have his face so they felt like if i could see him in that position they don't know how my body will react mm. and i'm pregnant mm so i might lose the child 
So the, we didn't go to the funeral. I had to view the funeral from a friend that was uh, sending me videos. I, I cried. If tears are supposed to end, mine are supposed to end on that day. I could even try steal my phone, uh, see if I can maybe book a flight, go on my own. So when my cousin noticed that I really want to go, he told me, if you go, you're no longer part of this family. So what do I do? This family is rejecting me. They are saying out here that I'm a bad person, that I never loved their son. I, I was only with their son for money. That pregnancy is not their son's. Wow, I could yangu. I couldn't wrap my mind around. A lot of things were just happening. And I was confused. I was broken. I was hurting. I remember we held, uh, some of my colleagues decided that they'll hold a vigil uh, at my place. Uh, and so many of them turned up, uh, people that we trained with. And the sister, I was told now by one of the cousins, uh, the sister to Enoch said that um, I was holding that veil for me to get money out of Enoch's death. It was that bad. Like, that is all you can think of. I didn't even organize this thing myself. I had no hand with this thing. But I was painted out to be the villain in that story. I was accused of uh, being involved in his death. That uh, I just, now, my history now came out. Up. Yes, that everything I touch dies. Everything that I have must die. So I was told that Mimi ni nooks, Mimi ni bad luck. And I I felt like so. And Lynn, I really questioned God. I did. Why? And it got to a point that I would just tell him like, why are you keeping me here? Just take me. I'm tired. You thrown so much at me. I'm just tired. I'm tired. I, I can't do this anymore. I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. I just want to rest. I'm tired. People say, rest in peace. I feel like that is the peace I need to just rest. Forget. I, I'm just dead. And I could just lock myself in. Uh, my OCS was a very good... Um, he was a very good father figure to the whole station. Mm. He organized that I, I get counseling from our headquarters and they would come, try and talk to me, uh, try to make me see things differently. Mm -hmm. But uh, at that time, I was bitter with God. I was bit If someone would just come, start telling me it, God had a reason why, up on your conversation, you may share. Because I want to tell me that reason. I want you to tell me that reason. So God took my mom, took my dad, took my aunties, took, he has taken everything. Kindly explain to me what, what reason does he have to do this? I got very bitter. I detached from the church, from people. I didn't want to be involved with life anymore. I would pray God to just take me and to take my child because I do not have the strength of harming this kid. I do not have the strength to lay hands on this kid to end his life. So God, take me and take my kid because I don't want him to see what I've seen in life. Because if I leave him behind, he will, he will see what I've seen. Mm. That was what I would pray for. Every single day, I want to die. And, you know, when I was young, I did attempt suicide a couple of times. And that cloud never goes really away. never goes away. It's always with you. Once you attempt suicide, you always, that, you always have that thing in you. That you Google easier ways to die. And I couldn't... I really wanted to die. I really wanted to die. And... 
no one was actually seeing that. Everyone was just expecting me to be just strong. But I've gone through a lot when I was a child, so you can also go through this. So I faced rejection, I'm pregnant, uh, I'm alone. Enoch is no more. The one person that made me feel loved and accepted is no more. So I'm there back in that lonely small box. And no one is there to understand because you expected like ni life. That's what I do. And it got to a point that I was called by my son's class teacher. And she told me that well, at home my kid was okay. Mm -hmm. He was playing, he was watching TV, he was doing everything normal. But when he got to school, he would just cry. And he told the class teacher that, uh, the dear Mikufa, sorry, uh, na mama na jifungia bedroom, akilia, she doesn't love me anymore. She doesn't care about me anymore. It hit me hard because this is my child. Like, even him, he at his age, he doesn't understand that I'm also having a hard time. So I had to box in my feelings and start concentrating on my son's healing. Oh. I had to be there for him a hundred percent and I shut myself out. I was just leaving. I, I, I would just wake up, go to work, make sure my son is okay. I didn't concentrate on my healing. Mm -hmm. I did nothing to heal. So I finally uh, get to a point where it's time for me to deliver. And I remember I didn't have anyone else I could call. My cousin is far, the wife is far. So the only people that were there for me were my colleagues. So I'm taken to hospital, I deliver. It was a nice delivery mm. because it only took me like three hours. Mm. I was done. And here she was, beautiful, beautiful baby girl, just like the dad. Oh. Very beautiful. And my colleagues still picked me up and took me home. So I'll just stay in the house. So the bills are on me. Uh, no one is coming to help me with the kid. So I had to be the one. Kujituma. Kujituma because you have no one. You're not going to call anyone to come and help you. You have no one to hold the baby for you mm. to sleep. It's just <coughs> me and me alone. And I have to make sure that the other kid is okay. And <laughs> it was tough. I'll just take Enoch's picture and I was like, if you knew you were going to die, then why did you have to leave me pregnant? I, I, all this is too much. It's too much. And I'll just ask God, God, please just take me and my kids. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't have the strength. Mm. That was my prayer every single night, every single morning. I didn't want to leave. And no one knew. Everyone around me saw me happy and I'm okay, I'm laughing. And, but I was hiding my pain. So one day I just decided like, I did one TikTok video and it blew off. And I was like, I can do this. <laughs> Kumbe, Kumbe can do this. <laughs> Kumbe have the face for this. <laughs> Kumbe can be a TikTok. Kumbe can be the next ASEAN. <laughs> but I'm not a dancer. <laughs> so every morning I would wake up, make sure uh, my son has gone to school, um, I've washed the baby, I've cleaned the house. Uh, I've taken a shower, I've done my little makeup there. I didn't even have a ring light. I used to use some flower pots. <laughs> <laughs> and I would do this TikTok and I would just enjoy myself. The world outside there was seeing me happy, but they didn't know behind closed doors I was still wishing I 
die. Mm. Mm. But it kept motivating me. Kuna kale ka 99 plus kana yes. kwanga pale chini. Yes. Ah, you have no idea yes. the joy, the joy. And I, I <laughs> every morning I would, it became a routine. I would wake up, make sure my son is okay, he is going to school, the baby is clean, everything is okay, I've, the laundry is done, and I'm there doing TikToks. With my flower pots, you could <laughs> looking for natural lighting, <laughs> <laughs> and it became something oh. that I really loved doing. And I could find myself eager, kesho ifike, I do this, I do this, I do this. And remember, I've still not healed. I'm yes. not doing anything to heal. I'm just doing something that is bringing a bit of joy yes. in my life. I go back to work, I'm still doing TikTok, I'm excited about it. And life just goes on, goes on. And Lerina, Peter, Kesho, Ivo, I'm excited. Uh, I didn't know that. Kaleka kwa hapo ndani katalipuka tu siku moja. So, uh, a couple years down the line, uh, someone, uh, some of my friends uh, encouraged me like, for you to because i would post enoch like even four times a week we miss you so i was advised that uh, you need to move on for you to let him go now i said uh, maybe if i do that maybe i'll be able to like ease some pain and let him go and i did that okay well it was not easy it was not easy uh, and I felt that me being with someone that was broken, uh, at least we could build each other up, uh, heal each other. Mm. But at first he was nice. He was, uh, he portrayed so much of Enoch's character yeah. until he finally, he knew that I was in mm. and unleashed his true color. He would literally make me feel like I'm a mad person. Oh, yeah. no, you went looking for a career bound. I went looking for... Uh, and you know, he knew that uh, even as much as he would treat me so badly, I wouldn't walk away. Because then I was so afraid to go back in that lonely box. I didn't want to go back there. As much as this guy would treat me so badly, talk so rudely, and mm. gaslight me, I still couldn't leave because I'm afraid of that lonely box. I'm so afraid of it. I can't go back there. Those lonely nights sitting there crying, They're I can't hot. go back there. Mm -hmm. But with this guy, mm -hmm. it was lonely, but I would enjoy the breadcrumbs he would yeah. give me mm -hmm. because I felt like I deserve this because right now the world uh, paints out the pic a picture that when you're a single mom, especially a single mom of two, you deserve nothing. And you know, dealing with this person, so much pain was coming out of me and I could feel my heart breaking and I could sit down and remember Enoch and I discovered that I didn't take time to heal. I didn't take time mm. for myself to understand what was happening and to really accept that this guy has gone and he's no more and I have to let that pain go. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to say I'm, I was perfect in that relationship. I will trigger some things. But you know, when you're triggered is when you discover that mm. you're not healed. Mm. And he will really trigger me in all ways in all ways making me feel stupid every time i raise something uh, i'm petty overreacting overthinking uh he he just mm -hmm. threw a lot of mm -hmm. harsh words yeah and i decided that uh i would work on myself when i'm still with this person maybe uh, he will realize that uh he, he will also learn that he has to let go of some things and I started 
working out, going to the gym. Uh, I built a new relationship with God. I dedicated myself to the church. Um, I began talking to a few friends here and there, expressing my pain, expressing my concern, getting advice here and there, and reading, watching Stoic philosophy. Mm. I started working on myself. And in the process, I could clearly see this guy was just bad for me. This guy was just bad. Just because I'm a single mom, I'm an orphan, does not mean I deserve to be treated less than a human being. Doesn't mean so. Period. I... And every... But I will just, like, give him a chance. Maybe he... He will be okay. He will be okay, you know? Like, we all need someone to take a chance on us. Because we all have issues. We all mm. have defects. So when someone comes in and takes a chance on you, it's a good feeling. Yeah. So I, I felt like maybe let me take a chance on him. Let me just be patient. Do you know I would call this guy we pray? <laughs> then it gets to a point that Ananizimia Simu Aneka Dunga. Dunga uh, someone sees when you're calling, but but yes. No response. And little by little I just began to let go. Let go. So the final thing he did was he texted me and told me like I'm a good person, I'm a good lady. I tick all the his boxes. But uh, he doesn't see himself taking responsibility of children he did not father. I realize later. Almost one year half a year down the line to I realize that. Yeah, has he take response? Which is okay. It's what he feels. I think uh, he could have told me that earlier, uh, before dragging me through all that, that emotional turmoil. Yeah. Um, but I, f I, I totally understood him, and I felt like it's cool. It has nothing to do with me or my kids. It's a you thing, Did. and it's okay. You're allowed to feel that way, but I cannot keep this mm. on mm. because my kids are the biggest part of me they are literally me it's me and them it's not me alone so if you cannot accommodate my children then we have no business we have no business together and when he sent me that message i finally felt like whew, relief Finally, mm. I can just stop uh, trying to hold on to this person. I can just let him go. And I felt okay being alone. It was okay. It's not easy being a single mom. Mm. It's not easy. Some days are very tough. Some days it's fun and games in the house. Uh, this one is doing that. Are, you're all laughing in that house. But it's not easy. You have to make all the decisions. You have to make sure everything is running yeah. well in that house. And I was clinging on to this person for emotional support that he couldn't give me. He wasn't emotionally available to help me. Yes. And I was okay letting him go. Good. And I started letting... Actually, it's when I started letting things go. I even found myself going through my wardrobe, letting things go, my clothes that I don't wear, shoes that I don't need. I just found myself letting things go, letting things go. And I was okay with letting things go. Mm. And that I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. I'm Good. really working on it. Good. Yes. You are working on it. How are you now? Um... I'm trying. Good. Uh, I have better days. Uh, some days are not okay. Uh, you spiral back. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is that every time I take a few steps back, I make sure that I do my best to take more forward. Mm -hmm. yes. And the kids? The kids are amazing. Mm -hmm. I thank God for them. Uh, I love them. They are adorable. Annoying. <laughs> 
but adorable. <laughs> yes. It's loud. <laughs> but um they're the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. Yes. Good. Dad, he's still in prison? Uh, he died in prison. Oh. Yes. Uh, now I'm even trying to reconnect with my dad's side. Because uh, uh, what happened, happened. Uh, they had no control. I had no control. It happened. And it's life. And now we have to rebuild ourselves. Mm. Uh, bring that bond back. Uh, be a family. And, you know, see where life takes us. God, huh? yes. I wish you all the best, you Thank know. You. Like, because, <coughs> look, you're amazing. You, you just, you. You're just a sweet soul. <laughs> like, there's not even much to it. You're just a sweet soul trying to figure out life. Yes. And, you know, sometimes you, you said just because you're an orphan. I remember um, my good friend Lydia. I yes. love that lady. She's a nice lady. I love Lydia so much. I hosted her here, but she's she's amazing. Yes. And I was just somewhere and I bumped on her TikTok and she was doing the whole, of course, I'm an orphan, mm. uh, the challenge. Yes. And I was like, oh my God, this is too much. Like no one should ever have to feel less of a person because of what they've been through. Yes. And to be honest, sometimes family contributes in making us feel more worse. And then we have to later on deal with the journey of compensating yeah. what we missed and we go looking for it somewhere. And that's damage and damage and damage and damage on our inner mind. But hearing you went for therapy, I feel like Enoch came into your life to show you how you need to be treated. Yes. He came into your life to affirm you. He came into your life, you know, to rectify all the things that you were told. Yes. I mean, like I just love him and I never met him. <laughs> but you know, there are those people who come into our life to overturn yes. the pages. Yes. People say this about you, mm. but this is who you are. And we have to be okay with that timing of their life yes. in our lives. They might not stay forever, but trust me, mtu watatoka tu pahali ya kujia kuambie kitu. Lafu ujulize. Like, upelini nimekuwa nikijiona hivi, na mi ni kitu. Like, you know, like, you know, no, no, hey, lean, bana, ayo, zaini unajuliza, kumbe mi nimekuwa nikijiona hapa. Kumbe mi nimalisafi. Mi ni kitu kwa hivi. You know, you're like, hey, come mm. And I feel like sometimes that's why people come into our lives. Would we want to, them to last forever? Absolutely. Okay. But if they don't, we have to keep remembering those beautiful words, yes. those beautiful, because look at you right now and see how this plays out. You come in a relationship with someone who feel, makes you feel stupid. Yes. You meet someone who makes you feel everything. Yes. So it helps because the next one, if he doesn't make you feel what Enoch made you feel, yes. you have no business, we have no business. settling yes. there. But how were your first days of counseling therapy? Uh, it was tough. Yeah. You know, opening up. Because, uh, you know, from my history, I used to be judged a lot because uh, I was, it was like, I'm just looking for sympathy. So no one wants to listen to you because uh, you just want attention. So it was a bit tough. Uh, it took me time to like actually start telling <laughs> every little detail. It took me a lot of time and uh, days and I became open. I actually even do counseling with my parish priest. Oh. So I just uh, go explain, this is how I'm feeling, this is what I'm going through. And he tries to guide me. And yeah, it's, I thank God for the progress that I'm making. Mm. I would have cried here. I, know. <laughs> I would I have know. cried, mm -hmm. but every time I release that, um, it becomes, it's a, it, it's a scar. I can't feed it away, but it's there. Mm. But every single day, uh, it becomes easier living with that scar. Mm -hmm. I don't have to keep checking on it. I don't <coughs> have to keep checking good, on it. Good, good. Yes. Did Enoch's family ever come to see the baby? No. Is that a relationship you desire with them? No. Okay. 
Yes, and I'm just... okay. The dad has been trying to call me. Yeah. Uh, hey, later I'm total. Uh, to, to me, picture I'm total, and I'm like, I, I, I'm not ready to build you, that relationship again. Right now, yes, yes. and you will get there if I, you are meant to get there. Yes, if you are meant to get. There. But I yes. do, I, I do hope you believe you are enough. <laughs> I'm working on it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, how far, how far? Just like I said, you uh, know, I have better days. Yes. And I have days that I spiral but back. In, in all those days, you got to believe you're enough. You're enough. You know, it's like, I know it's hard. Trust yes. me, you have done the work too. Sometimes you have really bad days. Yes. Sometimes you just have the best days. Yes. But I'm learning of all days. Like I, uh, you came here and I was telling you I had such a bad hair. <laughs> but I was just like, no matter what happens, I'm mm. enough for this show. Yes. You know, and I know, okay, not comparing, uh, but I hope you feel you're enough. You've gone through so much. Yes. But I'm happy that you are realizing right now you are worth. Yes. Your kids are getting to experience their mom in such beautiful light yes. and they will also understand when they come of age they'll understand mom has bad days mm -hmm. mom has good but sure. of all days they have to know their mom is enough yes you get what i'm saying yes. and i would love i love what you said you know just and you said something the society has made it look like if you are a single mom you're not even of one of two of plus two plus hey you you're just less of a woman what do you want to tell women who are watching you right now and then <sighs> that cup cup place of i i want yes it's okay being a single mom but i don't want people seeing me this way i don't want to experience the loneliness um it's hard uh, we all have our own desires as uh, women mm. uh for me if i meet someone uh, nice and willing to settle. I will settle. I will. I'll go for it. Good. I will go for it. Good. But uh, the first thing uh, women need to accept is that it's okay being alone. I know it's tough. It's very tough. Uh, but uh, learn to enjoy your own company. Uh, find something that you love doing apart from work. Something that you really enjoy doing. Uh, don't sit down and start thinking, oh, I'm damaged. Oh, I have these kids. So called, so called, because, uh, you know, uh, ev the, everyone says, oh, I'm tuameza, I'm tuameza. And then we, we are all painted that uh, we walked out of marriages. We are just bad women. And it's not true. You had a reason to walk out of that. And or oh, someone walked out of you. And someone walked out of you or someone died. You didn't choose. Those kids need you at your best. They didn't choose to be born. Mm -hmm. So they need you at your best. Mm -hmm. And just enjoy. They grow up so fast. So fast. Enjoy every little moment you have. If someone, you do not have to settle for less. Do not have to settle for breadcrumbs and peanuts. Because just because this someone is assisting you financially, you deserve to be treated less. No. You, you can manage the little you have. Kids don't know uh, these fancy, fancy things we try to bring them uh, to know. They know if I'm a kunywa chain, I'm kate. I'm a kunywa breakfast. So it's not a must. Akule bacon. It's not a must. As long as Teach your children to enjoy the little that is there. That is what you can bring to the table. Let them enjoy that and learn from that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you don't have to kill yourself uh, outside here, jumping from one sponsor to the other because you want uh, your kids to go to the best schools. No. Just accept the position you are. Try your best with what you have to give them the best. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Eh? Yes. What, what would you want people to take away from your story? What would you want people to learn? You are not your past. God. You are not your past. You are not what you went through. <coughs> you went through that, yes. It was molding you to be a better person. So don't cling on to what happened. Just take the lessons and move forward. Mm -hmm. yes. Did you ever have a conversation with your dad? No. Mm -hmm. uh, 
when he was imprisoned, I was under the custody of my aunt, so mm. I was never allowed to, you, you cannot be allowed yes. without an ID to yeah. see an inmate. Yeah. Yeah, so I never had a conversation with him and mm. he died while he was in committee. Mm -hmm. Did you have questions? A lot, a lot. But I, with time I just... How did you handle that? Uh, you can't ask dead people questions, so I just uh, decided that uh, he did what he did. Uh, he, he might not be aware that, he, maybe at that moment, at the heat of the moment, he didn't know that the outcome was going to be that uh, immense. And, you know, I just accepted that. Mm. He made a mistake. We all make mistakes. And that mistake took a very uh, big hit on both our lives because because he lost his wife, I lost my mom, mm. he had to go to prison, I lost my dad, I lost my childhood, that nice childhood experience with my parents. Uh, I'm sure he didn't expect that it was going to go that far. And I forgave him. And once I forgave him, I just let go of everything. <coughs> mm -hmm. yes. That's good to hear. Yes. May I wish you all the best. Thank Do you. Do you believe you are worth the love you are getting from TikTok, though? Ah, uh, yes. yes. That's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You dance to finger it after. <laughs> yes. <coughs> what does that make you feel though? Um nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most genuine nice. <laughs> That's the most genuine nice I've ever had. But anyways, go you. Yeah, and I try to mm. like talk to people. Mm -hmm. I've never gone for live because yes. I juggling work. Ah. So <laughs> And, and I like that after I've like <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> and my mm. my daughter is one uh mm. very hyperactive one. Yes. So she will knock everything down <laughs> when she's running. So but I I try and you know teach people one or two things here mm. and there. Mm. And I enjoy. Good. Huh? Yes. And you're worth the love um, you are receiving. Uh, a hundred percent. There you go. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, God, so you are such a vibe, but I'm about to let you go. But before I do, anything you think we should have touched on that maybe I left out, feel free to address. Um, not really, <laughs> but um, I'm glad I'm here. Thank you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Like, I'm glad you're here. The way I started saying, I'm happy we are breaking this my generational curse. Yes. I'm happy we are breaking these patterns. Yes. I'm happy we know we deserve better. Like, now you see your daughter will look at you and she'll be like, oh, mom is strong. There are things you are not entertaining right now that yes. will benefit your daughter. That when she looks back, she you will be her source of inspiration. Yeah. And sometimes, unfortunately, the way you said, you used to be beaten because you saw your mom going through it. Yes. You get what I mean? Yes. So can you imagine if you decide it ends with me, yes. my daughter will not experience this side. I'm going to do the inner work yes. so that they get to experience this side. It's beautiful. That's like my, that's my take home. Mm. Intentionally work on your healing journey. Because yes. I know it's been tough for everybody. But sometimes we also get to decide it ends yes. with me. Yes. So that the generation to come also don't get to go through the same suffering that yes. our parents went through. I appreciate you and Thank you're you. brave and you're strong and you're worth the love you're receiving even out there. <laughs> sawa, sawa. You, yes. So to dance to Kidoko TikTok, who knows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Never know. <laughs> I, I might hit the nation hard as us yet. There you, you, know? you wish is good. And why not? <laughs> and why not? And why not? <laughs> like, why not? Yeah. Yes. yeah, so me, I know where to find you, but where can people find you? Um, on TikTok, um, uh, Chaflo, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram still Chaflo, yes. Chal Chaflo, yeah. and Facebook Chal Chaflo. Good. Yes. Uh, one you get, Utaki Commander? Uh, I'm not aspiring for that. Mm. I just want to work here. Upper Chini. Ah, love. Yeah, deal with. You know, you are commanders, they just, uh, and yeah. uh, they don't have to deal with people one on one. Yeah, yes. you love dealing with people one on one. I love dealing with people one on one. The other day, um, mm. I was just walking around the station, and mm. this lady approaches me and she's like, 
Kavata you don't remember me and I'm like nikumbushe mm, T I was brought here a few years back I was refusing to go to school uh, you talked oh. to me uh, you advised me I really aspired to be like you and I went back to school and I got a nice grade and I was so proud of myself. Yeah, good go you that's nice. Yeah, that's yes. nice. Yeah. You're impacting where yes. you are. Yes. Keep doing it. Hakuna yes. pressure. Sini sawa. Yes. Yes. Receive your flowers for everything you've done. Shida ni msema kikutana na nyinyi uko nje. Mna kuanga mmeuma sura mpaka mtu aizi waongele. Ebu tuweke sura ya polisi kidogo tuone. I'm one of the most ah, we, smiling ah, cops. Ah, ah, I'm it. serious. <laughs> <laughs> I want to believe you but it's hard. <laughs> If you actually go around where I work, <laughs> everyone will tell you I'm the one always smiling at everyone. But si wali ku train kuweka uso ya kazi. Ebu weka tuone. Si hizi yeka nikiwa nimeva civilian, nikishava uniform. Ndio tutajua tujue so much. That's when we know we don't. Mtu anaogopa ngo. I need to your kirauni me. It's a rap. It's a rap. Uh, it's a rap. Hey, but you continue smiling. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank Your you. smile is beautiful. <laughs> Semi nataka tu ma police wakue wana smile. Their <laughs> smile is beautiful. Ah, but we, if we smile a lot, uh, people tend to I don't think so. I think people relax. Yeah, me I feel like by the way unaanga uki when you are driving and maybe umesimamishwa mm. then the police comes na na smile too mm. au na feel too kumwambia nyie officer nimekosea. <laughs> <laughs> so what have I done? What's my mistake? But aki come to kama ame smile, mm. au na feel tu kumwambia. Enye hata sijakosea mara moja kwa hii barabara. Nimekosea mara kadha. I'm sorry. You know, and there are some who will even make your day. Yes. But anyways, kazi ni kazi. kazi, ni kazi. I appreciate you. Thank you so Go much. Go out and conquer. <laughs> Much love to your kids. Thank you. And believe by the time you leave this show I just want you to know you are enough. Thank you. You are enough and you are worth the love you keep receiving from other pe- from people. Other people. Sinisa. Yeah. All right guys, thank you to Malize. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh this episode has been something else. She's such a vibe, right? She's such beautiful energy. Let me know what your take home is on the comment section. Let me know Meso Manini. Let's give her her flowers on the comment section as well. Let her know that she's enough. Let her go through those comments and feel like at hapo padogo penye alikuwa amebakisha. Let it make her day. When I see people coming out of these patterns as i said it makes me happy we are not what happened to our parents we have to intentionally decide of course that was unfortunate but we have to want we have to want greater things for ourselves and that makes me happy to see people like her people who are never meant to survive people who are never meant to make it in life and she's here now even encouraging young girls that later on they will look at her and say unilikuja ukaniongelea nimemaliza shule and i got a good grade sometimes i say you just have to touch one life you don't have to touch a multitude just touch one life and i hope her story has touched you keep sharing your thoughts on the comment section and do not forget to check out our partners at optiven they have amazing properties for universities wewe ambia kavata anunue wasiseme nilimunajua ni serikali but now you guys if you are looking for a property and you want a piece of land even if you want to retire why don't you try ocean view ridge in vipingo that's in malindi they have a great property for you and they have so many across the nation if that's not the one for you try their different properties across the nation their number is right here on the screen and of course to say thank you to our amazing team including the management at lnn for always making sure that we continue inspiring you guys one story at a time i see the love i appreciate it keep subscribing been keep supporting if you want to support us via na pesa our mpesa number is right here on the screen munaweza cheza kama nyinyi but no pressure and of course guys it wouldn't be possible without the amazing love and feedback we get from you we acknowledge the almost 830000 subscribers that we have we don't take it for granted keep sharing your thoughts keep sharing your positive feedback if it's something you can't leave on the comment section in for at lnn.digital that's where you can find me so how about i see you tomorrow at 10 a.m bye bye